Welcome back. We started this programme with an art of idealised aspiration. Greek statues that showed us what we could be if we were better than ourselves. Now we're wondering if we've even got ourselves to be better than. The worry is that now values are all illusions. We are only what consumerism tells us we are. All our art does is confirm our cynicism. Let's go back to the past for a lesson in how to cope with that. The problem of consumerism and art going together is not a new idea. In 1720, the painter Antoine Watteau saw it and he left us a message about it. Watteau's job was to provide silvery images of enchantment for a new rising middle class. But in his very last painting, out of the blue, he showed silvery enchantment and commercial reality. An art gallery, new social climbers inspecting the wares. Watteau is taking you into art's inner being. And it turns out that art's inner being is full of low motivations. This woman looks in a mirror instead of at art. This man wants to be seen as sophisticated, but he's leering at nudity. They're novices. They don't know the kind of scene they're looking at should be viewed from a distance, not close to. The whole painting's about disillusion. Higher values can be commodified. A portrait of the king, who should represent higher values, is just an object for sale in a packing crate. For all the cynicism of the image, it is beautiful to look at. The silvery enchantment level is just as high as anything Watto ever painted. His final statement is not that civilization is an illusion, art will fail, only commercialism is real. It's a parable about the relationship of art to life. Life is sordid, society corrupt, but art is only ever really enchanting if it seems connected to the hard realities of life, life's strangeness. The old agreed ideas of what enchantment is have broken down. Films and photos are the new mass enchantment. It might take a while to work it out, but artists still want to show reality intensified and vivified, as artists have always done. This art is about revealing harsh truths about what we've become. It seems to be about hopelessness. It's art about a kind of hell that society has become. The hellishness is that we can't believe in anything anymore. The despair of that. Civilization, the past, everything that we thought made us what we are. Our feelings of depth and profundity, all these are empty, nostalgia. I think it's true that the heroic nature of the art of the past is gone forever. We're democratic now, everyone can have a go, and I think that's right. But I think it's a false truth to think that higher feelings, our feelings of depth, are just an illusion, just fake. They are what Chin Song is tapping into when he's making his photos. The lighting so that there's an overall rhythm, the placing so that there's a flow of shapes, the contrast so that there's a visual drama, the arrangement so that the eye is always delighted, always given something to do. All that isn't despair. All that concentrated adjustment, trying to make an image strike a chord, is Chin Song being an artist. It's him connecting to the past, to centuries of artists making images. And when you become aware of that, you are connecting to something profound in yourself. You're tapping into civilization through your own feelings, your own sense of beauty and shape and order. These can't be heroic anymore, but that doesn't mean they aren't real. In the future, people will look back on our civilization through modern art and see that the metaphor it comes up with for the swirling incomprehensibility of now, for selves that are fragmented, for selves that are charades of selves, is strangely degraded forms. The greatest irony instead of the highest authority. Nondescript stuff transformed in the mind instead of souls saved by nature jokes instead of heaviness, questions instead of certainty. Should we kick art or thank it? I think neither 
We should look within and see, yes, new freedoms mean there is no high and low anymore. We are all the low. We think our art is weird, but we are weird ourselves because civilization's models for authority have changed. In our world, there can be a god, but god can be anything. In art, we see the creative chaos that comes from our break with the past, our new dreams, the questions we are ready to ask now. We look, we think, we enter the future. See you there. Goodbye.